today's video sponsor is Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for supporting K Digital Studio. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel where it's all about digital planning and getting creative with your iPad. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through my illustration process in Procreate as well as my favorite brushes and how I use them in the app. I'll hopefully be walking you through my entire process of illustrating and painting my fruits and florals kind of collection that I've been sharing pretty often here on Instagram. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, be sure to head over there so you can see more of these illustrations. But I will show you my process for illustrating so you can take those same techniques and possibly the same brushes if you're interested in the brushes I use and apply that to your own illustration style. So let's get started. So I've created quite a few different compositions and I'm applying the exact same process to all of them. I'm also applying the same color palette with the exception of this one right here. But I'm using the same color palettes, I'm using the same process, and I'm still able to get a really unique and different piece. Okay, so here is my collection already of all the kind of fruits and florals that I have been doing. As you can see, my process is kind of interesting just by looking at the collection that I've already done so far. You'll see a lot of duplicates here, and that's because I like to duplicate the original file and then kind of tidy it up in a final fruit and floral type of collection, whether it's to post or to share. And I like doing that because it enables me to one, kind of have a backup of my work and two, I can play around with however I want to present the work after I've already done created it essentially. So we're going to go ahead and jump into kind of my process here. So jumping right in, I normally like to start by heading over to our lovely grail here, Pinterest. So I'll just go in and kind of see the different artworks that have inspired me to create, or maybe I like the color palette or the composition, the way it's laid out. As you can see, I've saved quite a lot of different florals and fruits, and that's really mostly for the composition. I'm still learning how to create a piece that flows and works really well together, and a lot of times this just really helps me to see where I should place different florals or different fruits. So for instance, in this piece, I might have kind of my entry point coming out from here. Maybe I'll have different flowers, different leaf shapes, a different fruit entirely. So I mainly use these as just kind of a way to see how I want to compose my piece. Other times I might like a shape a specific flower shape that they use and I'll use that but kind of go my entirely own way with it and so that's kind of how I like to approach each of these pieces so for instance I think I want to attempt clovers and shamrocks in one of my pieces that's not a shape that I've tried before with creating these fruits and florals and I think it'd be interesting to combine some of these shapes here into a piece so what I like to do is I'll come in and I'll just download this image and I'll use it as a reference to kind of get that shape. I really like that. This is actually a piece I used composition wise for this piece right here. So I really liked kind of just how it was just a singular branch. And so if we put these side by side, you can see where I drew my inspiration. I used an entirely different color palette. I didn't use any oranges. I used some of the similar flower shapes, I approached the leaf shapes differently, and I actually created even bigger florals on this to add for focal points too. So it's really easy to create kind of derivative pieces from the work that I do with these fruits and florals. So that's just one example of how I did that. So I think I'm going to start with the clovers and kind of see where that goes. I really like these big florals here lately. So I normally just download a ton of different florals that inspire me, maybe the composition, the flowers they use. All right, so heading over into the actual Procreate app, now that I have a few images downloaded, I'll come to this collection now that I have a collection going, I'll come up here to my plus icon, and I have a canvas already saved for this. I called it Digital Portrait because at first I was practicing portraits and I used this canvas size. Right now I'm using a 3000 by 3000 at 300 DPI in the P3 color space. And I just have that canvas size created. It's really easy to share and create from, and I can make them smaller if I need to. 
So this is the canvas that I create the most on this size canvas, at least for Instagram and social media. And the brushes I use the most, I actually put under a folder called KDS Branding. Some of these brushes I created myself, some of these I bought, and some of these I got for free. So these are the brushes I use the most, and, and these are the brushes that I use to create my fruits and florals kind of art style. So to start, I have a star here. I like to incorporate these into Instagram posts just to add a little fun flair. I really like using that and it's really easy to create your own star stamp if you're interested. I'll be sure to link my how to create procreate brush video so you can find out how you can make your own stamps and procreate brushes. Then I have this lightning strike again similar to the star just something fun to incorporate into mostly Instagram posts and it'd be fun and interesting to try and incorporate them into a few of my lettering pieces as well. Similarly I have the retro sparkle stamp which is available in my 70s lettering brush set for procreate that I can link below as well as the retro mini sparkle so if I put this up a bit it's kind of just like a square diamond then I have kind of these little curly cues that I think are fun and interesting I also have these little stars so these again are fun to add into any lettering pieces then I have the mojo stamp that is in my lettering brush set my 70s lettering brush set then I have a simple sunshine from a brush pack that I purchased. Then I have the far out stamp that's again in the 70s brush lettering set. Then I have Gladys cotton fluff and this is from this is from the brush set by the Gladys thing. I'll be sure to link her in her shop below. This is just a really nice textured brush that I like to incorporate into a lot of my fruits and floral pieces. And so this is just a really nice texture that I like using to kind of incorporate a little something into my drawings. Then I have her honey and lemon paint pen. So I actually altered this one a bit. Here's the original. It's a little bit smaller and I just duplicated it so I can have a bigger version of that same brush. And I really like using this to add highlights and lowlights into the fruits and florals that I create in my brush set, which you may see later whenever I go to illustrate. Then I have her Gladys salt and pepper brush. This is fun to kind of add a little bit of roughness. I kind of like adding this as kind of little white or black specks to kind of the fruit that I create. Then I have her feathery shadow brush. Again, this is fun to really add some texture, a little bit of something to my illustrations. And I also like using this brush for highlights for the fruits and the florals. This is the dry ink brush and this comes with the Procreate app. This is really fun whenever I want to draw something but kind of get a more hand-drawn effect. I normally really like drawing with mono weight and mono line brushes, but if I want kind of more whimsical, cutesy, or hand-drawn effect, I really like using the dry ink brush in place of the mono line brush. It has a really nice texture and it's one of my favorite brushes that come with the Procreate app. Then we have the vintage mono weight brush and this comes in my 70s lettering brush set. Similarly to the dry ink brush, I really like using this brush whenever I want a bit more texture, a bit more character in whatever I'm drawing. And it is mono weight, so depending on how hard I press on the screen, it won't affect the thickness of the line. And I just really like this to add a little bit of texture as well. And I mainly use this brush when it comes to lettering the 70s or any hand lettering I do within the Procreate app. This is the main brush that I use for painting the fruits and florals illustrations that I really like to create and share on Instagram. This is the wet gouache brush from Liz Colaire Brown. I'm not sure that she sells her Procreate brushes. This is a brush that I actually got from a class that I took with her on Skillshare. This is one of my favorite gouache brushes that I've tried in Procreate and I've tried other gouache brushes, but I'm always turning back to this exact gouache brush. This is the brush that I primarily use when it comes to painting those fruits and florals and procreate. And I have my lined textured brush and I believe this is from a brush set that I purchased but I really like this brush because it has a really really nice texture and effect. I really love using this brush specifically for lettering, more so hand lettering and modern calligraphy within the procreate app. It just has a really nice texture, kind of watercolor effect. I have this pencil sketch brush that I created and I like to use this to sketch out my ideas and designs and illustration, move things around, kind of get a messy rough sketch before I go in and touch it up and paint. So this is the brush that I use to do that. 
Then I have the big speckle and little speckle brushes that are already out in my shop if you want to purchase these as well. This comes as a brush duo and this is a large part of the K Digital Studio branding. Then I have my Chilling Mono Weight brush. This is my favorite brush and kind of my go-to brush to use in Procreate. It's just a really nice mono weight brush. Doesn't matter how hard I press on the screen, the line stroke will stay the same weight and it's just a really nice kind of smooth brush and I really like using that one. Then I have these two different kind of recycled paper looks. So these came from the fine art paper set that I purchased from Creative Market, which I'll be sure to link down below. They have a lot of amazing textures for pressed flowers, parchment paper, recycled paper, craft paper, different cardboards, different watercolor papers. I specifically really like their recycled paper look. So when I go to finalize my illustrations, I'll just run this across the screen and it has a really nice kind of realistic paper texture that I really, really like. So I have these two saved because I really like these two and I'll just run those across the screen to get a really cool paper texture effect. So those are all my favorite brushes. I'm always in this category that I created for myself under Procreate. But first, a word from our sponsor. One way that you can improve your illustration or improve your confidence with illustration, whether it's traditional media or in Procreate, our sponsor Skillshare is perfect for doing just that. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people like yourself on topics like illustration, design, photography, video editing, freelancing, piano, and so much more. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I have so many Skillshare classes that I've saved and I can't wait to jump more into learning about my art style, my illustration style, and just growing as a digital artist. The class I am currently taking is Hand Lettering in Procreate Fundamentals to Finishing Touches by Geogram. I admire her approach to the class and her guiding me through a new way of approaching hand lettering in Procreate. This class really allows you to approach hand lettering and the different lettering styles in an entirely new way. And I'm always left with such a great feeling of accomplishment after completing classes on Skillshare. With Skillshare, you can find inspiration in the moment and learn how to experience express your creativity. Which is why the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. Skillshare is honestly so much fun and all the teachers on there are so lovely. So I'd love to hear what skills or what classes you are taking or learning through Skillshare down in the comments below. So jumping right in, I'm going to start off with black here and I'm actually going to switch my palette because I'm all, I always use the same palette for these and I find that I'm able to use the palette in very different ways to get a different effect. So the palette that I like using is called Gratias and you can purchase this in my shop if you want to get this palette for yourself. Occasionally I'll go for the Bookworm Florals or the Clayful Freckle color palettes that I have here. 99% of the colors in the Fruits and Florals collection that I have is from the Gratias palette. So I set that as default, but I will select black and go in with my pencil sketch. So now that I have that, I'll come over here, go with my reference, and then just choose the reference I want to go with. So I'm going to start with this one. And then what I like to do is I try to stay neat with the fruits and florals just because I go with so many layers. I've actually hit the max layers before and have had to combine things, which is the worst feeling ever because I like to have things on separate layers. And I actually like to have like a very organized methodical approach when creating these. So I actually go in and name my layers, which is something I don't normally do. So I'm going to name this my sketch layer and just go in and sketch Usually my sketch layer is the ugliest thing. I just try and get down and then touch it up later with paint. Gouache is so easy to work with, especially the digital gouache. And so it's really easy to just get something down on the sketch layer and then make it so much better with the gouache. So I'm just going to go in and kind of sketch a few things. So 
So I'm using the reference photo more for composition and the shape of those clovers. Once I have the composition down and the shapes of a few things that inspired me, I'll eventually stop looking at it and kind of go my own way with the piece, which you'll really get to see later throughout my process. I've drawn enough of these that I have a few shapes that I always turn to to fill out these pieces that I think are fun and just add a little bit of character to each illustration. I normally do all of my sketches on the one sketch layer, but lately I've been practicing a new floral design that's a little bit more involved than my usual floral shapes, so to make sure I get it right, I'm actually drawing this on an entirely new layer. I may do this for certain shapes, but at the very end I always combine them to have everything on one sketch layer. Sometimes, to cut down on time, I'll duplicate a few of the elements I've drawn and make use of the tools in the selection panel down at the bottom, the different flips, I'll mess with the size, and sometimes I'll redraw a few parts if I feel it's necessary. A lot of times while I'm sketching, I'll pinch out to see what the piece is looking like and kind of assess whether I want to add something or leave a little bit of negative space. I remind myself often to kind of just zoom out and see what's going on versus working zoomed in drawing the whole time. Once I'm done with my sketch, I'll make sure everything is combined into one layer and then turn down the opacity. I'll create a new layer and I'll typically call this layer colors. Even though I already have a color palette that I like to work with, I like seeing what the colors look like next to each other or on top of each other, and it kind of reminds me of traditional painting, so I like to do this to choose colors that not only work well together as an entire piece, but work well next to each other. It's also nice to have to go back on and kind of just see what colors I used in the piece if I ever want to revisit it. Once I have my first color picked out, however, I'll start painting on a new layer, and I like to break up my painting by subject, so all of my clovers will be on one layer, all of my palms on another, and so on. So I paint everything using the wet gouache brush. I feel like this gives the piece a lot of cohesiveness. The other brushes I showed in the earlier part of this video are what I use to add more texture, highlights, and shadows. So to get the palms more full, I'm duplicating the first layer that I did for them and then using the selection tool to rotate them to get that fullness. And a lot of times with botanical shapes like these, I'll create a clipping mask and then add a bit of texture on top of that layer with a bit of a deeper color to give it the appearance that it's really full.
I wanted to have this piece be a bit more full in all regards, so I went a bit off script here, which is something I actually do pretty often. So I'm just going in to add some more traditional leaf shapes. <laughs> Similarly, I felt that this piece needed another flower in the bottom corner, so I'm going to go in to add that and then head back to my branches layer to add all the necessary elements for it to fit in with the rest of the piece. And I also wanted to go in and add some little flowers too. I use the clipping mask a lot to add elements on top of things like leaves or flowers because it's a very non-destructive way of adding a bit more flair and fun to my pieces and I can always turn off the clipping mask if I wanna go a different direction with the piece. Once I'm done painting, I'll head back into my gallery and name the piece original. And then I'll duplicate it to put the final touches on it and get it ready to share on social media or in my portfolio. It also serves as a manual backup of my work too. And then I just name the duplicated piece final. On the final canvas, I'll flatten all of my groups and merge them all as one painting, then resize and center on the canvas. Something I've been doing with all of my final pieces is adding a painted layer as a background. So I like to use the Gladys paint pen and just test out a bunch of different colors to see what looks best before finally painting an entire background. Not sure why I started doing this, but I've done it with all my pieces and I think it's just a really interesting part of my illustration style. On a clipping mask layer above it, I like to go in with a deeper color and then use the recycled paper overlays to give a more textured and vintage look. Sometimes I'll also import textured paper as well. I wanted to add something else to this piece and you honestly cannot go wrong with a few dots here and there so I did that on this final piece too. And then right before I go to share on social media, I'll type out and add my handle. And that's my whole process for illustrating and procreate. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything you took away from it, I would really like to hear about that down in the comments below. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new here so you can see more content like this. I make videos weekly and again, I will see you next week with another video here on this channel. Bye everyone.